The Bauhaus is still considered today one of the most important schools in the world of design. Its meaning, born from the mind of the first director Walter Gropius, indicates the origin of modern art and architecture. This style is commonly associated with elementary shapes such as square, triangle and circle, in addition to the use of primary colors including red, yellow and blue. The Bauhaus can also be recognized within the world of design by the use of bent metal tubes, an extremely avant-garde technology for the period in which the school worked. The Institute's movement is inspired by a previous style called neoplasticism or distigial. If you don't know them, I made a previous video that you can find in the playlist called Design History. The Bauhaus remained active from 1919 to 1933 and witnessed a combination of historical events and a succession of management study methods and workplace changes. Let's start by saying that the institute was opened within the Weimar Republic and was the merger of two existing institutes in the area. Walter Gropius had waited in vain since 1915 to be able to direct the Weimar School of Applied Art, Kunstgebäude, which closed when its founder and director Henry van der Velde was dismissed because he was a foreigner. However, before leaving, van der Velde indicated Gropius, Hermann Aubrist or August Indel as his successors to the ministry. In October of the same year Fritz Mackensen, who headed the Higher Institute of Fine Arts of the Grand Duchy of Saxony, wrote a letter inviting Gropius to head the school's fledgling architecture section. In the correspondence between the two, however, many divergences emerge regarding the form that the architecture course should have and regarding the relationship of architecture with applied arts and production systems. In January 1916, Gropius sent to the State Ministry of the Grand Duchy of Saxony in Weimar a proposal for the establishment of an educational institution as an artistic consultancy centre for industry, trade and crafts. The State Institute of the Bauhaus was born from the merger of the former Higher Institute of Fine Arts and the former School of Applied Art of the Grand Duchy of Saxony with the addition of an architecture section. Therefore, the Academy of Art and the School of Arts and Crafts came together in a single institution. Walter Gropius wanted this new institution to be founded in Weimar because there was a strong industrial pole growing, from which important collaborations could develop. All the design philosophy that Walter Gropius wanted to convey to his students can be found inside the Bauhaus Manifesto. The idea was that of a collaboration between artists and artisans, for the creation of a new type of product. This is because the artist has the ability to observe the world in a different way from the collectivity, and is able to perceive and understand its changes before everyone else. At the same time, the craftsman is the key figure for the creation of a product, because he has the necessary experience to understand all the production techniques that could be applied to each individual project. Walter Gropius thought that the artist, thanks to his skills, could give a soul to the products while he considered the products born from the industry to be extremely cold. He therefore had a thought still far from the concept of industrial designer, who collaborates with the company to create a new product to be manufactured on a large scale, using the best technologies on the market. With the Bauhaus Manifesto, the director wanted to move away from the classic model of education provided by academies at the time, which were seen as too artistic and too little technical and which alienated students from real priorities. The Bauhaus was initially heavily subsidized by the city of Weimar, administered by social democracy. After a change in the Thuringian government, there were serious disagreements with the authorities, to which was added a growing hostility of the city's public opinion, which led to the closure of the institute in Weimar. In 1925, the school then moved to Dessau, where the famous building that will house it, designed by Gropius, was built. It is considered the manifesto of the new rationalist climate that was imposing itself in European architectural culture, and of which the Bauhaus in Dessau became the main driving force. In Dessau the concepts based on the craftsmanship that characterized the school in the first years from its birth were overcome, therefore artisan teachers were no longer foreseen. Furthermore, finally in the new headquarters Gropius was able to extend his teachings to architecture as well. In Dessau the publications released by the school intensified, including the Bauhausbücher and a four-monthly Bauhaus magazine, 
monographic and composed with exclusively lowercase and standardized characters according to DIN. Honus Meyer was appointed director after the resignation of Walter Gro Pius in March 1928 which he presented due to economic and administrative problems. In 1925, the first director of the Bauhaus had to accept extremely restrictive economic conditions from the city that housed the institute. The economic revenues received by the state were extremely low as were the school fees and the profits from the projects carried out within the laboratories which turned out to be less conspicuous than expected. So the Bauhaus was not in the least able to support itself, it had numerous debts due to the construction of the main building, the houses of the masters, and construction errors that led to additional costs. Walter Gro Pius hired Honus Meyer as a lecturer for the fledgling architecture section, and they worked together for about a year. The new director was considered by Gro Pius as a communist in disguise. This political inclination led to clear censorship of the institute during its tenure which lasted from 1928 to 1930. Under the direction of Honus Meyer for a period of time the entrance to the Bauhaus was open to all students who wanted to enter it, without following any selective criteria, but the problems of overcrowding led to the decision to restrict the number of students to 150. Meyer would have liked to establish a type of teaching dedicated to sociology, economics, and psychology, abolishing the part dedicated to painting and design. On May 5, 1930, Following some demonstrations by a group of communist students, and the complaints of professors including Joseph Albus and Wassily Kandinsky, there was a meeting between Mayor Hesse and Honus Meyer who was invited to resign. Regarding the vacancy of the new director, Gro Pius was asked to resume his post but declined the invitation, as did the architect Otto Hiesler. Thus, it was the architect Ludwig Mies van der Rohe who accepted. From 1930 until its closure, Ludwig Mies van der Rohe was the director who gave the school a more architectural character. Gro Pius and Honus Meyer had wanted a Bauhaus link to the social context, but this link was lost with Mies who believed that the institute had the sole purpose of giving the student a complete artisan, technical and artistic training. Following the decrease in state grants, Mies decided to raise student fees and support the institute on the proceeds from licensed production of products designed by students over time, and purchased by the Bauhaus. Thus it was that the institute registered, as a precaution, all the patents still unused and bought all the new student projects. With the appointment of Wilhelm Frick of the National Socialist Party as Minister of the Interior and of Education, the struggle against modern and contemporary art and culture began. The National Socialist architect Paul Schulze-Nornberg was sent to the old headquarters of the Bauhaus in Weimar, where a school similar to it had been formed, to close it and reform it on a pro-Nazi basis. In Dessau the Nazis decided to close the Bauhaus, starting with the elimination of subsidies to the institute and the demand that foreign teachers might be fired. The Bauhaus officially ceased operations at the end of September 1932. Following the closure of the Bauhaus in Dessau, Magdeburg and Leipzig, two cities then led by social democratic administrations, were the first to offer the school space for a new location, but Mies decided to set up the private free institute for the teaching and research, by renting an abandoned phone factory. The seizure of power by the National Socialist Party, however, also marked the end of the experience in Berlin. With the entry into force of a law according to which even private schools had to be subjected to the provincial school administration, Mies requested permission to open an art school and the response of the Gestapo was to respect certain conditions imposed by the Ministry of Culture that is, the dismissal of Kandinsky and Hilbesheimer, the absence of Jewish teachers, the presence of some teachers enrolled in the party and a program of studies oriented towards National Socialism. Given all these conditions, the teachers unanimously decided to permanently close the Bauhaus on July 19, 1935. No difference between the beautiful and the strong sex. Much of the Bauhaus attitude towards women can be immediately understood from this sentence, by Walter Gro Pius. The school was indeed open to both sexes and had strong progressive aspirations, but real parity was far from being applied in practice. 
When the Bauhaus opened in 1917, there were more applications from women than from men. Despite this, many women were denied access to courses, those who entered the school were prevented from accessing courses considered much more important, such as painting, engraving and industrial design, and were therefore diverted to women's workshops, pottery, weaving and bookbinding. This attitude was particularly strong in the early years, under the leadership of Johannes Itten. When Gro Pius succeeded in replacing him with the Hungarian designer Laszlo Mohalinagi in 1923, the situation improved for many female students. Gro Pius wrote in the school's manifesto that the school was open to every person of good standing, regardless of age and gender. The Bauhaus had a modern and libertarian mentality, but was nonetheless a victim of the strongly sexist mentality of the time and achieving genuine equality between the sexes was simply a step too far. Laszlo Mohalinagi made sure that many female students were given more freedom, and it was he who encouraged Marianne Brandt to join the metal workshop. This gave her the concrete opportunity to learn the skills that would make her one of the most innovative industrial designers in Germany of the 1930s. The situation was never completely resolved. When Mies van der Rohe became director in 1930, it essentially became a school of architecture. Since this camp was traditionally closed to women, very few were able to establish themselves. Annie Albus, for example, only succeeded after leaving school and reaching America in 1933, where she successfully worked for Knoll and Rosenthal. Nowadays, various exhibitions and conferences pay homage to the women designers of the time. The innovations made in teaching are the permanent legacy that the school has left. These still influence teaching, especially in industrial design courses. The course's organization underwent many changes during the life of the school, but some aspects remained peculiar and universally recognizable. Initially, one of the main goals of the Bauhaus was to unify art, craftsmanship, and technology. It can be said that thanks to the Bauhaus it is possible to witness the birth of design as union of technique and art. Another important innovation brought within the school was the preliminary course. This didactic activity, carried out first by Itten and then by Mohalinagi, corresponds to the modern basic design course, which has become one of the fundamental courses of most of the schools of architecture and industrial design in the world. The school lacked history teaching, as it assumed that everything was designed and created as if it were the first time, rather than with a reference to previous projects. The school was primarily focused on architecture, and often built low-cost public housing for the Weimar government, but not at the expense of other art disciplines. Trying to summarize, the Bauhaus consisted of a basic training with the introductory course, the painting course, and the course called Man, these all had a maximum duration of six months. Only once these courses had been passed, it was possible to access the workshops, divided between, ceramics, wall and glass decoration, metalwork, carpentry, weaving, sculpture, typography, graphics and advertising. The workshops, in turn, were propagutic for accessing both the architecture and theatre course. Many projects were born thanks to Bauhaus School and these have profoundly conditioned the world of design. Among these and first of all the Wassily Chair, designed by Marcel Brewer, during his study period at the Institute. Another very important product is the teapot designed by Marion Brandt during the metal workshop. That's all, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like or subscribe to the channel if you wish to see other content related to the world of design. See you next time. Bye.